you this Tuesday. I have something really personal to share today. <laughs> when do I not share personal? Let's be real. Because I get real. That's just how I roll. I'm going to share with you a part of my journey in homeschooling when I encountered for the first time a significant learning challenge I had never encountered before. And the truth is, as this video is titled, the, the truth about getting help for a struggling reader in homeschooling is that I, I put it off. I put it off because I only saw this in hindsight. So this might save you time, stress, struggle, shame, just all of that whole vortex that I was really locked into for a while. So here's how it went down. I was the first Christian. I am the first Christian in my family, um, first to get married, first to have children, and first to homeschool. In fact, I never even heard about homeschooling until I was in my 20s. So it's, I live in Canada. I mean, there are homeschoolers, but I had literally never met one. So you can imagine my parents, my family, my relatives, uh, close friends, even people in my church. Homeschooling was still pretty fringe. Like they didn't know any homeschoolers, never heard about homeschooling. So when we announced with baby number one, the first grandbaby, right? So like big deal on both sides of the family that we had chosen to homeschool. Oh my gosh, it rocked a lot of boats. And there was a lot of questions and a lot of uncomfortable conversations. And I have, um, you know, family and relatives that are in, that are public school teachers and so on. So, you know, not knocking anybody, just sharing my personal experience here there were a lot of conversations and I, I mean, I was a brand new homeschooler. This was pioneering for me. I had never done this. I had never seen anybody do this. I knew why we were doing it. And I was, you know, giving myself grace to learn an entirely new profession. And yeah, I didn't go to school to do this, but I had plugged in with my local homeschool community, which I highly advise. And, and I was like, Hey, there are people who have done this. They've done this generationally. This isn't completely fringe. Yeah, it might be a little more subculture, but it wasn't utterly brand new. This wasn't a fad. So I, in my own heart, was convinced and convicted. We had our why. We wanted our children to grow up in a, um, like, passing on our values. For us, it was a religious conviction. When people ask me now, oh, why do you homeschool? I'm like, oh, it's a God thing. And if they respond to that, I'm going to keep going. But if they're like, Ugh, then I just like, go oh, whatever. You don't really, really want to talk about it. That's fine. So... There were specific conversations, though, that happened in those early years when my oldest was like four, right, kindergarten age. And as much as I lifted my shield of faith and I stood my ground, you know, as graciously as I could, though there were tears, there were sometimes really uncomfortable conversations that I had to go home and almost like barf it all over my husband because I'm just like, look, you know, so-and-so today is just getting on my case and like all of their fears and all of their stuff. And I mean, I get it, but geez, give me some space. You know, I'm figuring this out. <sighs> it was intense. So fast forward a couple years later, now I'm six kids in, <laughs> I've got 11 now. And I had, you know, learned I'd plugged in, but I was like I said, six kids in. So I wasn't a complete noob anymore. And the five oldest, you know, I had developed a system that worked for me, did a little bit of shoestring stuff. I did some do it yourself. Eventually I started buying some curriculum. There's so many choices out there. It can be overwhelming. Another talk for another day. I found what worked for me and my kids were learning how to read, learning how to write, doing basic math and progressing at their own pace through, you know, just normal academics. I was aware of what the, the laws and regulations were in my province here in Canada. And I just, you know, worked within that very private person, normally kind of introverted. Okay, I'm a lot introverted. And I just mind my business, raise my family, loving God, loving my family, loving my husband and just doing my thing. But by baby number six, well, I wasn't a baby anymore. By the time he was two years into his home education journey, the same journey I'd taken with all his five older siblings my alarm bells were going off. And I was like, he's not moving at the same pace by a long shot. And at first I was like, oh, well, you know, kids move at their own pace. And that's one of the beauties of homeschooling. You can move at your own pace. So if your child is more accelerated in a subject or overall, great. They could just zoom right through, right? And you can just furnish them and support them with supplies and resources and all that good stuff. And boom, away they grow, which is great for an accelerated learner or someone who has like a particular like deep dive interest. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'll circle back after. I really will circle back. And I'll say hi and we'll chat in the comments. So, But my sixth child 
something was off. Like my little, my mom intuition was like, hmm, this is a different pattern. So for the first year, I just observed. But well into year number two, my alarm bells were going off. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Panic started to hit. Like quietly, I wasn't telling anybody. I wasn't even ready to tell my husband. He was not, not able to do anything more than write his name. He couldn't read more than three letter words. He was stumbling and forgetting things all the time. And I was like, he's a bright kid, able to have conversation. He's the first person to make a friend when we're out in public. He's gabby and social and intelligent. He's got a great memory. He can memorize Bible verses like nobody's business. So I'm like, okay, he's intelligent, but something's not clicking. And I'm doing the same pattern that's worked for five kids. But here's the truth. Here's what was happening and why I held back for so long. And this, this might be you too, or someone that you love. I held back from talking to anybody, even my husband, because I was scared. It brought up all my stuff that I didn't even realize those little seeds of doubt that were planted in the early years, all those awkward conversations when I was a total noob and I didn't know how to defend my decision to homeschool and how to have like an articulate poised conversation with relatives and family or even church members who were, I mean, try to be gracious and generous and, and not think of them like really maliciously, but like sometimes those conversations were a little bit brutal and they weren't really well refined. You know how people are these days. There's so, so few filters, right. On how people speak online and, and even in person. And like I said, there were people who are so quick to, um, label and diagnose people. And I realized that I had a hang up for me with the idea that one of my children might have a label, an educational label, like, you know, a word, a, a series of letters or something. And I didn't really unpack why that bothered me so much, but it did. Cause I was a, like, my body was physically reacting with a full-blown fear response, like sick feeling in my chest, elevated heart rate, dry throat. I mean, all the signals were there that I was clearly having a mild panic reaction to even the thought that this was happening and what would be on the other side. So I delayed. I get it. We freeze, right? We don't know what to do. You freeze. You buy time. You hope it'll go away. Maybe if I don't talk about it, this isn't happening. <sighs> Hold my breath in a little bit. I get it. Grace, right? So I waited, hoping Hey, he's just a little slow. Everyone was throwing pace. But two years into this, about to go into the equivalent of grade three, I was like, I'm lying to myself if I say this is just moving at your own pace. And then I had this battle of why am I so scared? Like the angel devil kind of, you know, cartoon. Tara, just talk to somebody. There's help. You're not the first homeschooler who's ever gone through this. Statistically, one in 10 children, you know, have some kind of learning delay. It just could be how God made his brain. You know, look, Tara, five children have already are very moving at a totally normal pace. You have no concerns. Even the family and the friends and the people are admiring and now recognizing the fruits of, you know, your diligent labor. You've learned how to homeschool. Like all this internal talk, right? But then there was this other voice of being like, and when they find out that so-and-so can't read, can't even spell the word to, T-O, they're going to, see, 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 I told you that homeschooling thing doesn't work. See, you should have sent them to school. You waited until he was eight. What's wrong with you? What kind of parent are you? So that accusation was there and it was so powerful. And like I said, my body was responding to the fear. So here's the truth. If you're observing something that's just like off in one of your children, and it's maybe you know been more than a year, two years, you're going on to three years of observing what you suspect might be a learning challenge, a learning delay, call it what you will, but something's off and your mom intuition is kicking in, but at the same time, your fear response is kicking in, that's a clue that you've got some baggage to get rid of once and for all. So I finally did it. Long story short, I just sat down with the Lord and I was like, I am so scared to find out that my son has a, a series of letters or a word, a label. And I was like, okay, why? And I'm like, because all the, all the women in my life who said all those things years ago now, this would have been like almost a decade ago, 
they're all going to be like, they're going to be proven right. It'll be literally like proof positive that I was crazy to do this homeschooling. All my worst fears are going to come true. And that one of my ch children has lost years of educational progress because I was just too dumb, too ignorant, too unqualified, too. And look what, I, and I did it to him, like inflicted my own ignorance. And sweet. I got it all out with the Lord in privacy, had a good cry. And then once that storm passed and it was just me and the Lord, he saw me as I was and loved me as I was. He was just like, okay, got that out, kind of barfed it all out. And he rubbed my back and held back my hair, gave me a cloth, so to speak, and said, so what do you want to do about it? I was like, I want to help him. He's like, okay, who can help you help him? And I'm like, I bet you I could talk to some homeschoolers. I could talk to some of my friends privately. I'm not going to go talk to my parents because they don't really have, you know, I, I don't expect them to understand. They wouldn't even know what to say, right? They don't have that advice to give. And I was like, I started to believe that I could find help. And it broke the shame that even if there was a label or a diagnosis, and even if, yes, this is going to be an upward climb, and I was going to have to learn something completely new, like how to work with a kid who has like learning challenges, which I hadn't done before. And even if people did say those worst things, I'm like, see, see, I was going to help my son. And so I turned my focus away from the crowd, the, the panel, the jury, the judges. And instead I focused on my beloved son. And that changed, like, that really, that, that, that kicked into my mama, my mama love, my mama bear, and also my hope in the Lord that I learned how to homeschool and I wasn't a complete, complete failure five children in and I could learn this too. And that if the God, God brought me to it and entrusted me with this child who had special needs, then he would equip me for the path. Even though I was now standing on the precipice where I could only see one tiny step in front of me. It was new territory. Of course it was scary, but the Lord was with me and I could do this, right? I could do all things through Christ. It just shifted when I unpacked my stuff my fear, those little things that were said years ago. And I didn't realize what an effect they had on me because I wasn't thinking about them anymore. But man, they were there and it was time for them to come out. And I thank God he did. It was very uncomfortable at the time, like all vomiting is. But yet better out than in, right? So here we are. A year later, I did take a journey of getting help. I did talk to some homeschoolers privately. Just sent like two of my homeschool mom friends in my neighborhood private message totally like this is classified. I'm not ready to talk about this with anybody. And I did begin to find out, Hey, have you ever gone through any, or do you know anyone who's gone through? And I just described what I was experiencing and observing. Um, I'd like to talk to somebody about it professionally. Do you, could you make great? And I want them to be homeschool friendly. Like I don't want to deal with somebody who's just going to be like, we'll just send your kids to school. That wasn't a card on the table for me. It was certainly was not going to be my first option. So yeah, I got advice. I got recommendations and we started on a path that eventually led to us connecting with a former homeschool uh, educational therapist in my neighborhood. We got a professional assessment done and I began to feel empowered and I began to feel like I was still nervous and scared and a little bit self-conscious, but I just, I just set it aside. I'm like, the Lord is with me. He has brought me to this point. He will bring me through this point and I will learn how to educate this child. And that took courage and that took faith and it changed everything. So everything changed. And now it's been a year since that point. And I'm, I want to share with you, I'm going to do a whole separate video on this on Thursday. We ended up connecting with all about reading. I changed my reading um, program. This is the only thing I actually ended up changing. That was the recommendation after the assessment. Oh, spoiler alert. My son was um rating like he was measuring below the first percentile across the board so yeah i was right and i cried when the news came when i got the phone call of the assessment i let myself feel my feelings and then take action take construct okay well then what can i do what can i do and we ended up making some changes and i've got support now and i didn't tell my family until i was ready <laughs> honestly and like it was a couple of months before I told them what was going on. You don't have to tell everybody your business right away. So there's a couple of pieces of wisdom from the road. If I've gone, a I've probably gone ahead of other people because I'm not the first and I'm not the last. 
to have a dyslexic son, a son who has a dyslexic mind. I could talk about this at length because I really do want to empower other women to break off those bonds of shame that can come up, especially if you homeschool or you're doing like a different than, you know, the, like you're not just sending your kids to public school. You're doing a little bit differently, like a private school or a co-op, so many different ways to do education these days. And if you're worried there's a problem, but you're also feeling locked, like paralyzed with fear and you're like, I should do something, but I'm scared to do something. Feel free to pop into my Big Family Moms group. There's a link below. Huge group of support. Not everybody in their homeschools, but everyone in there is a Big Family Mom, three plus kids, or loves Big Family Moms and wants to you know, learn and support with each other of how we can bless our children, how we can grow in God's grace and in skill, especially when it comes to parenting our children on the educational front, whatever that looks like for you. And if you do homeschool, this is something I'm very passionate about talking about. And I also respect not everybody is going to homeschool. So like I said, on Thursday, I'm going to do actually a product review of All About Reading and and share a little bit more deeply what our experience was like and and like what I would recommend if that's something you decide to do for any reason um, and you want to learn more about that. So I'm just about wrapped up here and say good morning to Cindy. Good morning from South Africa, Miss O. Nice to see you. Cindy says, my mom started Christian school in our living room um, the year that you headed to college. So by the time you had children, there was no question that you would homeschool. Yeah, and her in-laws weren't so nice about it. Yep, yeah. <laughs> I know. Now, yeah. And then uh, the last two years happened and it's been very interesting. People have said to me, wow, okay. You know, when the first lockdown started happening here in Ontario and they were like, oh, you guys were really ready for this. I'm like, I didn't homeschool because I was expecting a global pandemic, but yeah, we didn't skip a beat. And we were in the thick of it with just beginning to make the major turnaround with my son and his, his educational approach. And um, we were able to weather that storm very differently. We didn't lose two years because then I didn't have to deal with all of that stress because it has been a stressful couple of years for everybody. So I'm going to wrap up here and pop out. I'll see you on Thursday to talk more about specifically what we did and why I highly recommend that particular reading program. So if you're looking forward to hearing more about that and the journey, what it's been like for us, I'm really looking forward to connecting with you, sharing with you my, my experience and my insight and my recommendations. So God bless you. I'll talk to you